Okay, so Mistral has released a new version of their 7B model. And unlike before where they just dropped a magnet link or, you know, they're not good at the announcements until a few days later, still there is no announcement sort of a day and a half later, but they have put it up on Hugging Face. And so I'm going to go through a little bit about some of the changes here and some of the things that I think are quite interesting, as well as their sort of package for actually running it as well. So I'll show you how to use that and how to run it with Hugging Face like normal as well. So if we come in here, this is the actual model that we're going to be testing out. This is a new version of the Instruct model. It's not just a new fine tune though. If we look, we can see that there's actually a new base model in here as well. Now there's not a lot of information out there about sort of like benchmarks for this model or anything like that. On Twitter, I came across a couple of people who've done sort of some of their own benchmarks here. Here you can see Aditya has basically done some benchmarking of sort of medical things and comparing it to Llama 3. It does the Llama 3 still is probably on top for this. And then we've got some of the more traditional benchmarks here where we can see, you know, for me, the big ones here would be like the GSM 8K. And we can see that the Llama 3 is doing, you know, quite a bit better in here as well. So what are the other things that they've added to this? Well, one of the cool things that added to this is the whole idea of supports for function calling. So they've got a new tokenize and they've extended the vocabulary of that tokenize in here. So we'll actually look at that in code and see what's in there. So let's jump into the code and have a look. Okay, so I've put together a simple notebook for testing out the instruct model in here. I'm gonna go through this reasonably quickly. As always, I'll put the notebook in the description. You can look at it yourself. You can run it yourself, that kind of thing. You've got a number of different ways that you can actually run this. So we can run this with the Hugging Face Transformers, and we can run it both in sort of the traditional way where we actually load up the model and the tokenizer. We can also run it as a pipeline, which is what I'm doing here. And then you've also got the ability to run it with their particular SDK as a pip package, which I'll show you at the end as we go through this. Now, you can see that when I'm just bringing this, in, the instruct version in here, what I'm going to do is basically bring in the old tokenizer from the 0.2 model. This shows us that actually we've got a whole new model here. We've got a new model with a new tokenizer. For a start, we can see that the new tokenizer has got 768 more tokens in it. I will sort of go through and show you what some of those are and, and how you know, they're kind of interesting. And we can see some of the ends seem to be adding in, you know, perhaps other languages in here as well, which could be interesting. But if we compare basically just taking a string and putting it through the new tokenizer and the old tokenizer, you can see we get totally different tokens out. So this is fundamentally a, a new tokenizer. It may be that they've added support to from other languages deliberately in here. One of the things that we can clearly see is if we basically take you know, the old tokens versus the new tokens for the starting tokens, we can see now we've got a bunch of special tokens that relate to tool calls, available tools, tool results, etc. in here. So this is showing us that the tokenizer itself now is having sort of like native support for the function calling stuff in here. So my guess is that you will see this get implemented in a lot of the orchestration frameworks reasonably quickly and people will be able to use this. Now in their own framework, they've actually got function calling examples, which I'll go through in a second. The same as before with the Mistral models, we don't have a system role in here. So you've basically just got like the user and the assistant roles in here. So if you're going to have messages, you must go user, assistant, user, assistant. The model wants that and you can't pass in a system message. So what I tend to do is in the cases like this is concatenate the system message to the start of the user, the first user message in there. Here we can see that basically using Hugging Face, we can apply the chat template for doing this. We can set it up to see like, okay, how it's going to do the tokenizations for the prompt and getting some test output there. And then I've got, you know, functions that I've had for a long time now for doing the text wrapping and for doing the generation. So you can see here that I've just taken my standard function that I use here, but what I'm actually doing is I'm concatenating the system prompt to the user message in here. So that, that will show you, you know, how to do that. 
Okay, now if we look at the, I would say probably the Llama 3 is better uh, on the whole f for this kind of stuff. But if you happen to like the Mistral, it's much more of an uncensored model as compared to you know the, the Meta Llama 3. Even though Meta Llama 3, I guess, is much better than Llama 2, though, for this. We've still got some of the characteristics of the Mistral models of, of liking to give you sort of things in, in points and stuff like that. And you see that here with the Sam Altman email that we've got the point sort of thing coming back, which was always something that we saw. This was quite a thing to see this kind of formatting come out from it. And it is interesting to sort of realize now that the, the different companies, as they're building their supervised fine tuning data sets, and they're building a lot of synthetic data sets for these kinds of things, they're getting the outputs to be in a very specific style that they want. So Google tends to lean heavily on the chain of thought sort of style of breaking things down to sort of evidence and reasoning, and then finally giving you some kind of answer out. Mistral in the past has been more sort of format, and you can see that it looks like it's reasonably similar here. I would say OpenAI has a much more verbose format. So these sort of styles are starting to come through consistently with various models that we see from them. And the reason I would say is, is because each of these companies is building these huge data sets for doing fine tuning. And a lot of that is synthetic data, which they're actually using now to train their sort of frontier models as we go through this. We can see that even though this doesn't have a sort of traditional system prompt, it definitely responds to when we talk about the, the five-year-old boy versus the vice president writing the email to Sam Altman. All of these things are quite different in here. But here we get actually a very long answer, even though we wrote out, write out your answer short and succinct. Clearly it didn't pay attention to any of the system sort of instructions there. Most of the others are kind of similar. I'll sort of skip through some of these. The GSM 8K stuff, it does a, a decent job. I wouldn't say any sort of better than what it did before. We can see that some of them, it clearly gets wrong. So some of the, the more advanced ones, it's getting wrong there. If we break it down to math though, it then is able to get it right. So we can see that by step seems to help it in here. React prompting stuff, this is where it seems to have benefit and, and that kind of thing. It does, it seems to do quite well at getting, uh, picking out the function or the next step in the React prompt. You can see for, for King Arthur, it's picking out the Wikipedia search. And then finally, for this one, we should just be getting a general search. And we've got a web search here with the import of being latest AI news today as we go through this. So those are clearly working quite nicely in here. I'm going to skip ahead just to their own sort of way of doing this. So they've got their own package now, which is the Mistral inference. Package. And this allows us to download the weights from Hugging Face, just like before, just pointing out something too. And one of the things that I find that's kind of interesting is even though this model is a, an Apache 2 license, which, you know, means we can sort of do what we want with it. It's still a gated model meaning that you, you have to basically opt in and I guess give them your name and email. And I'm not sure if that's like, you know, Mistral's intending to send us all Christmas cards or, you know, they're, they're definitely probably trying to get some data on who's actually using their models, which to be honest, I don't really have that much of a problem with. I think that's kind of fine in here, but it's not like we're opting into some special license like with Llama 3 or something. This license is still an Apache 2 license in here. All right, so back to the Mistral way of doing it. So with the Mistral inference code, uh, you basically download the model or, the, or snapshot as they're calling it here. And that includes your tokenizer file, etc. You can run it via a command line if you want to. But then you've got code here for just basically loading up the model and then doing sort of chat completions on it. So we can see we've kind of got their own version of doing what the Hugging Face Transformers is. Now, I guess if you were just using their particular models, then this would be really good. Honestly, I kind of find that I personally would probably use the Hugging Face one more because it's just going to be something that I can change the code and swap the models out and make them pretty interchangeable quite easily. And, uh, but anyway, we can go through, we can do a generation that works quite nicely. If we want to, we can do the actual function calling now. So you need to make sure that you don't 
load the model again, it will overload the GPU, unless you've got a very big GPU in there. But then we can see that the function calling is just this add-on of tools. Now, this goes back to the special tokens that we've got from before. So we can see that the, you know, the, the collection of tools and stuff is probably using those special tokens in allowing the model to be able to actually do these kind of calls in a particular way. And we can see that the actual sort of what we're passing in here is really no different than what we've done other function calling things here. You can see that, okay, we've got a name, a description, we've got the parameters. Basically, they've got their own description as well. So being location and being format, we can basically constrain something with an enum so that this format can only be Celsius or Fahrenheit. Again, we've got the description and stuff like that. And then we've got required being location and format. So this is pretty good in that it's exactly the same as the function calling formats, you know, that we're using for other things. It's just that they've been able to now use special tokens to do this. You could imagine this is what OpenAI does as well on, on their side, although a lot of it, we just don't get to see exactly what they're doing. You can see that we're passing this in. What's the weather like today in Paris? Sure enough, it passes back exactly what we would expect from a function call, that it's going to be doing current weather, arguments, location, format Celsius. Now, the thing I haven't tried is I'm not sure whether it can do parallel function calling and things like that. That would be something that you can come in here and have a play around with yourself and try it as you go through it. So overall, I would say, you know, the model, if you, the Mistral models and the style of the Mistral models, then you're probably going to like this. If you're just going for maybe the best model that can use at the moment around this size, probably the Llama 3 8B is going to be better for this. But we certainly could see people doing some interesting merges with this and you know, interesting fine tunes with this. So let's see over the next you know, week or two what actually people do with the Mistral model. The Mistral models were always very good for doing different kinds of fine tuning and getting different results out, etc. Anyway, as always, if you've got any comments or questions, please put them in the comments below. If you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.